Praise the Lord. It is good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Thank the Lord for his many, many blessings. Amen. It rained on me just a little bit today. Did it rain here? I don't know. I wasn't home today. But uh, uh, thank the Lord for sunshine. Amen. Some guys was pouring some concrete today, and I stopped and just kind of spoke to them. I knew the man that was that owned the property there. And uh, I said, I, I hope you guys have a blessed day and plenty of sunshine. <laughs> and they said, amen to that. <laughs> oh, I was talking to my daddy yesterday. And uh, that hard rain come through. He said, my goodness, it must have rained 20 inches. <laughs> I said, well, I don't know if it rained that much, but it did. It rained hard. I know that. But thank the Lord for his many blessings that he has bestowed upon each and every one of us. Amen. You know, we can look around and see our world is in a lot of trouble. The world has just lost its mind, seemingly. There's a lot of things going on. Uh, when you think of what's happening in Cuba, the protest and the things that are happening there, uh, Haiti, their president and his wife was assassinated this past week. Some missionaries that uh, we know, known, um, yeah, there was um, two missionaries, or one missionary and a pastor that had flown into Haiti, the missionary with his family. And uh, they, when they got to Haiti, the, uh, with the unrest and everything, they were flying to another location. Instead of driving, they were going to fly on a smaller plane. Because of the number of people that they were, they sent, he, the missionary sent his family ahead. And then him and the pastor called another plane going to meet them. They got there, and his family was not there to find out that the plane had, had, had crashed and all six people were lost in that. that that's heart-wrenching. When we see what's happening around our world and we see people hurting and, and it, it, it should trouble us deeply. We see the direction that things are going. But the Bible tells us when you see these things happening, don't just look at what's happening, but look up. Our redemption draweth nigh. Amen. Praise God. You know, we've studied the Bible. We've read through it. We've looked at it. We've listened to prophecy, prophecy preachers teach in the book of Revelations, end time events. All my life, I have I've been in church all my life. And my life's not over yet, and I'm still in church. Amen. And uh, But... All these years, I've heard them preach about these things coming to pass. All these years. And, you know, and, and, and I've preached it myself. And I know Brother Eric and Brother Tom has done the same thing. We have preached these things. These things will come to pass. When you see these things happening, know that perilous times are upon us. We know we're there. We're there. I've known it all my life that these things would come to pass but in the back of my mind I'm secretly praying Lord don't let it happen in my lifetime amen don't let it happen in my lifetime what I want to see happen in my lifetime is a great revival of people being saved filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost lives being touched and changed bodies being healed the eyes the blind to see the deaf to hear the lame to walk drug addicts delivered alcohol uh, how alcoholics set free that's that's what i want to see happen in my lifetime amen i'm still praying and believing for those things to take place praise god but we see these things come about and it should trouble us but we also need to know in whom we have believed this world is not my home i'm just a stranger passing through praise god Hallelujah for a promise that we have as children of God. A promise. Not just, not just some uh, hearsay thing, but a written down, signed and sealed by the blood of Jesus Christ, the only begotten Amen. Son of God. A promise. Amen. Of a better place. A better life. 
He talked about entering into his peace, that place of peace, where the gates are made of pearl, the walls are of jasper, and the streets are paved with gold, and there is a crystal river that flows through it. And Christ is the light of that city. My, in the midst of all that we see going on that is wrong in this world, we can look up and say, I know what's right. And if I'll walk that path, I'll enter into his kingdom. Amen. There's several we want to remember to be praying for. Sister Dina had a a death in her family. One of her cousins passed away. How old was 22. Sad, sad. Let's remember this family. Brother Larry is at home and is uh, making improvements every day. To God be the glory. Sister Dory, him and Sister Dory, we want to remember to pray for them. You can imagine the stress level of all of this catches up with you. But we know a God that is able. Let's do continue to pray for both of them. Brother Bobby, he was telling us a lot just a minute ago. He felt like cereal, snap, crackle, and pop. Amen. Or maybe that was the reference I made to the things that he was saying. (laughs) But we want to remember Brother Bobby. The Lord would touch him and strengthen him. There's several others that uh, they need healing in their bodies. Amen. And we know God. There's nothing impossible with God. Nothing beyond his reach. Amen. Praise God. But let's do remember our nation, our neighbors, our friends, people that we may not know, but God knows. And he can use our words and our actions to be a testimony to that individual to give them hope. Stand with me all over this house. Those of you that are watching by Facebook, thank you for tuning us in. As you log in, let us know you're there. We always like to see that. If you have a prayer request, you can post it right there on the page, and we will definitely be praying with you. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you tonight once again for the great honor and privilege that you have given us to come into your house to worship you. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done and all that you are going to do, what you are in the process of doing right now. Hallelujah. By faith we believe. Praise God that you hear and answer our prayers. Touch Brother Larry, Sister Dory, Lord, with healing and strength in their bodies. Praise God, Sister Dina's family, Lord, that you would comfort them in the midst of this battle that they are going through. Praise God, Lord, Brother Bobby, that you would completely heal his body. All of these other needs that are represented. Lord, we believe you to speak that word. Oh, hallelujah, that that healing virtue will flow from the throne room of grace into that heart, into that home, into that body. Lord, and bring healing, deliverance, victory, a peace of mind, the comforting of the Holy Ghost. Lord, whatever is needed, you are more than able to supply that need. Praise God, praise God. You are the great God Almighty, the King of kings kings and the Lord of lords and we love you and we worship you from the depths of our soul with all that is within us let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord Lord we worship you we give glory and honor and praise unto you in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus praise God praise God hallelujah hallelujah brother Eric lead us in some worship here praise tonight. The Lord. let's turn our hearts to the Lord tonight and let's just worship him in this place amen You know, I know that every one of us, we face all kinds of difficulties and circumstances. But you know, the thing of it is, is we can all come together, we can all set it aside, and we can just focus upon the Lord and worship Him tonight in this place. And let's do that. Amen. Streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. When I'm found in the desert place, though I walk through the wilderness, blessed be your name. Is every blessing you pour out? out Turn back to praise. And 
when the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name when the sun shining down on me, when the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. We bless you, Lord. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering. Though there's pain in the offering, blessed be your name. every blessing you pour out I'll turn back to praise and when the darkness closes in Lord still I will say blessed be the name of the Lord blessed be your name blessed be the name of the Lord blessed be your glory name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Blessed be your name. Sing it again. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, oh, Blessed be your name. Yeah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. You're worthy. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name, singing. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Yes, amen. Aren't you glad to know tonight? That no matter what we face and go through, we can always praise a faithful God and worship Him. Amen. And enjoy the fact that when we praise Him, He inhabits the praises. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like was lost but now I'm found was blind but now I see t'was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved how precious Chains are cold, I've been set free, yeah. My God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing. 
Aren't you glad for the grace of God tonight? Amen, church. Hallelujah. Let's give him some praise tonight, church. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Truly, his grace is one of the most amazing things given to mankind. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. We're going to ask Brother Eric if you'll just come on tonight. Amen. Brother Eric is uh, has been our youth pastor, worship leader, uh, bottle washer, maintenance guy, go-to guy, teacher. <laughs> he has, he has uh, wore, he's not wore many hats. It's been a multi-purpose hat. It just fit all occasions. Amen. For four years, he has served the church in that capacity. He has been a great friend to me and my family, him and his wife and his kids, and we love them very much so. Amen. This coming Sunday night, uh, is a special called business meeting for First Assembly for all the members of First Assembly. At 5 o'clock, it is important that you be here at that meeting, amen, to, uh, for the purpose of voting on Brother Eric and Sister Dina to be the next pastors of First Assembly. He'll be preaching tonight and Sunday morning as well, amen. Praise God. I've been pastoring for many years. And I've come into uh, churches that have been without pastors for some time. And when the sheep are without a shepherd, there's a lot of issues that comes up. And the church goes through a process that is really not necessary. It can be avoided. If you have someone in house that can just transition into that position. Now, Brother Eric and Sister Dina, they are not strangers to First Assembly. They both got saved right here. But I believe Brother Eric could point to the spot where he prayed through, right there on the corner of that altar. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And not only have he has he been faithful to the Lord. 
but received the call to ministry to preach and has pastored how many churches? Two different churches, been a youth pastor as well, and a children's pastor. Amen. Have you held the position of secretary or treasurer? Me neither. I've filled every other position, but not that. I've taught every Sunday school class. <laughs> I've been the choir leader. You was your own secretary, but not the church. <laughs> well, no, that's a little different there. <laughs> that's a little bit different. So he's come up through the ranks and is now an ordained minister with the Assemblies of God, holding credentials and in very much good standing. We love them and we appreciate them. We're going to ask, we're going to turn this pulpit back over or over to him tonight to preach. Amen. We love them. God bless you, brother. Thank you, Pastor. Appreciate you. Amen. I did not ask for that introduction, but I do thank you, Pastor, for that. You know, there seems to be maybe a, a slight awkwardness in the air because they say trying out. I hate that. I'm just here to preach. Amen. I'm here to preach, and I want you to hear what God has to say. Amen. And uh, we want what God wants uh, for his body. Amen. And uh, so take your Bibles tonight. Turn with me to uh, Numbers chapter number 13. Numbers chapter 13. Um, Numbers chapter 13, that's just not going to do it for me tonight. I'm sorry, it was, <coughs> that mic in my ear was aggravating me. Amen. Numbers chapter 13. We're going to start at verse 26. Amen. I got um, a few scriptures here. I was meditating on something the other morning, and I was reading through some stuff, and just in praying, and yesterday morning, yesterday morning, and I wasn't even thinking about this, but yesterday morning, when, when a moment happens like it happened yesterday morning, I was at work, I was in my truck, and I had just got in, and I was, I had uh, the Christian radio going, um, Caleb was going there, and I caught just I mean, just a small phrase of what, I don't even know who the person was. I don't even know the full context of it. But when they said a specific phrase, this passage of Scripture just leaped in my spirit, and God began to download some things in my heart. And I said, okay, Lord, so I'm here to, give you the download tonight amen of what the lord has given me numbers chapter number 13 starting there at verse number 26 amen it says now they departed and they came back to moses and aaron let me just stop let me catch you up the spies are returning from the land of canaan this is the first time moses was still leading the israelites he had sent the 14 spies in, or the 12 spies into the city, or into the land of Canaan. And they were, have returned back to Moses and were picked up here in verse 26. Now they departed, and they came back to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh. And they brought back word to them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And then they told him, and said, We went to the land where you sent us, and it truly flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. I mean, they're, they're standing there holding the evidence of what God promised them that they would find there in that land. And Moses also saying it to them. Verse 28, he says, But nevertheless, the people said, Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong, and the cities are fortified. 
and they're very large. And moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. Verse 29, And the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites, and the Jebusites, and the Amorites, they dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites, they dwell by the sea and along the banks of the Jordan. And then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. Verse 31, But the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land, which they had (coughs) spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw in in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the descendants of Anak came came from the giants, and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight, and so we were in their sight. Chapter 14, verse 1. And so all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried, And the people wept that night, and all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron. And the whole congregation said to them, If only we had died in the land of Egypt, or if only we had died in this wilderness. Why has the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and children should become victims? Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? And so they said to one another, Let us select a leader and return to Egypt. And then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces and before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel, but Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb and the son of Jephani were who were among those who had spied out the land and tore their clothes and they spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel saying, I'm sorry, I I, I left out verse 7, 8, and 9 for the media team back there. And they spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, The land we have passed through to spy out is an exceedingly good land. And if the Lord delights in us, then then He will bring us into this land which which give us and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. Only not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land. Catch that nor fear the people of the land, for they are our bread, their, our, their protection has departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. Verse 10, and I'm going to stop here. And all the congregation said to stone them with stones. And now the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the meeting before all the children of Israel. I want to preach to you tonight for a few moments upon this thought. When fear is in charge. When fear is in charge. Help us tonight. Father, we love you. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your many blessings. And we thank you tonight, dear God, for this opportunity, dear Lord, that we have to gather together in this house and everyone to log on tonight and to and to be a part of this service, dear Heavenly Father. I am truly glad when they said, according to the scripture in Psalms 122, I'm glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord, because Father, this is a great place to be. Dear God, that we could be in your presence, that we can worship worship you, that we can praise you, that we can strengthen one another, that we can encourage one another, that we can find your word and know that it is true and that we can be fed at your table. And Father, I just thank you tonight. I pray for the anointing of your spirit. Anoint me to convey unto your people that which you would have me to tell them tonight. And Father, I pray for your people to receive what your spirit is saying to them. It is crucial in this hour, dear God, that he who hath an ear, let them hear what the spirit of God is saying and I ask it tonight and I pray it in Jesus name and let the church say amen you know tonight as we go into this passage of scripture I'm going to be dealing with the subject of fear that's pretty obvious when fear is in charge you know one of the oldest emotions that I find that is written upon the pages of scripture that is manifested in human life is the very first emotion that I find is fear in scripture if you'd go back to Genesis chapter number 3 verses 8 through 10 and it says and they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord 
God among the trees of the garden. And then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? And so he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. That was the very first emotion that we find that is manifested upon the pages of human history, and that is that of being of fear. And it is all throughout the Scriptures we find of where fear has riddled and ripped the lives of people and has, has, has done great such great destruction inside of their lives. You know, the Bible actually says in the words of my son, here's you a fun fact. The Bible actually says the phrase, fear not, in the King James translation, 365 times it says through the Scripture, fear not. That phrase, fear not, is found. I find it interesting, not counting, I'm sorry, not counting the leap year, but for every single day of the calendar year, 365 days, there is a phrase that says, fear not. You know, that speaks to me tonight, that fear and, and, and the children of God and the people of God, they should not walk nor should they be governed by the emotion fear inside of their lives. If God would take the time to write down 365 times a single phrase, not counting the phrases that says, do not be afraid, and the phrases that says, worry not, and the phrases that says, fret not. I'm just saying that fear not is 365, but all of those other phrases are phrases that leads to the reality of being led and tormented by fear inside of our lives. You know, the scripture tells us that God spoke through many in many places to many different people. He told Abraham many times to fear not, but he says, walk before me and be thou perfect. He called on the, the patriarchs of old. He told them at multiple times to fear not and to fret not and to worry not. He called on them to trust him and not to worry. He told Joshua, he said, to be of good courage and to be strong. And he says, and do not fear, for you shall lead this people into the land of Canaan and you shall divide unto them an inheritance. He told Mary that wonderful day when Gabriel came and he declared unto her that in her womb should be that of a Savior that should be born and bless men and to bless humanity. The phrase that come out of the angel's mouth was Mary, fear not. Hello somebody. To have an encounter like that and to be at that age and to understand what was taking place, I'm sure she would be afraid. But the very first thing the angel of God said to Mary was to fear not. There's something about that old monster fear tonight that if we allow fear to dictate and govern our lives it'll wreak havoc it'll wreck our lives it'll not only wreck the physical life but it'll wreck your spiritual life you'll draw up like a prune you'll become cold and indifferent and you'll walk away from God if you ain't careful there's several things here tonight in this passage of scripture that God began to download listen to me it very seldom he normally does a little bit by a little bit of when I am preparing and seeking God for a message I can count on two hands but just probably about two hands of the times of over the years since I've started preaching that God I mean he downloaded these things and it's like I'm going down the road in my truck I'm driving now and it's like I'm driving and I'm paying attention I don't have no devices in my hand or nothing I'm going forward and it's like the book, the scripture opens up and God begins to download these things into my spirit and here's the thing, when he downloaded them, I couldn't write them down at that time, I didn't have time to type them down, so I had to wait a few hours until I could but they was just as fresh then as they was when he downloaded them in my spirit, I want to tell you tonight church, and I want you to understand that the first thing that I find in this passage of scripture is this that God through the, uh, the children uh, the, through the man Caleb and through the man Joshua he tells them here in chapter number 14 and in verse number 9 he tells them very specifically he tells them he says only do not rebel against the Lord he says nor fear the people of the land he says for they are our bread and their the protection has departed from them and the Lord is with us and listen he says do not fear. See what you've got here in this passage.
passage of Scripture is you've got several hundreds of thousands, if not in the early numbers of millions of people who had went in. A few of 12 of them had went in. Ten people come out with a bad report and it sat there and turned hundreds of thousands of people against the will and the direction of God. And now they're standing there trembling, afraid. And so therefore, they have been gripped by this monster fear and now fear is beginning to drive the boat of this nation and I want you to see what fear will do inside of your life if you don't get it under control and grab hold of the Lord God Almighty and let faith direct your life and let the promises of God direct your life and the faithfulness and goodness of God inside of your life the first thing I see here tonight is that fear will stop you from progressing forward you've heard me say it before several times from behind this pulpit I've learned this in my life that if the enemy can ever get you bound by fear he has pushed pause on your life hello God can't push you forward you won't go forward in fact we'll get to it in a minute you'll start stepping back when fear grabs hold you won't progress forward you'll say well no there ain't no well to it honey you will stop in your tracks when you become afraid listen to me when a rattlesnake falls in front of you what do you do you stop and you jump back you don't step over him do you why because you probably going to get bit if you get too close but what I'm telling you tonight is fear will put the brakes on in the progressing forward in your life let me explain it to you understand that God was moving the children of Israel from Egypt to Canaan he had done brought them through some stuff hello he had done told them a bunch of promises he had done showed them something he told them what he was going to do and then he began to do it before them and he's brought them all the way through they've left Mount Sinai and now they're at the River Jordan and they're fixing to go over into this land and they got afraid they got full of fear and guess what the brakes was put on God had brought them from Egypt to Canaan God had brought them through the Red Sea God had brought them through the desert he had brought them to Mount Sinai and now they was in the wilderness of Paran and told Moses and Aaron to send spies out into the land for the Lord was going to lead into the land and to give them that wonderful land but because of fear it put the brakes on God moving them forward listen to this because I'm going to jump way down into the other end of the story here in Numbers 14 verses 26 and 29 listen to what has taken place here and the Lord spoke to Moses and saying how long will I bear with this evil congregation who complain against me I have heard the complaints which the children of Israel make against me and say to them as I live says the Lord just as you have spoken in my hearing so will I do to you the carcasses of you who have complained against me shall fall in this wilderness and all who you and all of you who were numbered according to your entire family from 20 years old and above. Did you catch that? So of the 10 people who went in, who brought back a poor report of each one of those 10 tribes from the age of 20 up to those who let them in, guess what? They didn't get to go in. In so much, the Bible said, that their decision to be ran by fear and to give a poor report was this. Guess what? what? It would cause their children to wander 40 years in the wilderness. We'll get to that in just a minute. So God was ready to take them in then but fear got into the camp and guess what? The brakes was put on and then guess what? They had to backpedal and wander for a while. Listen to me. You ever wonder why? Just maybe why God ain't doing what you might be needing God to do inside of your life? It might be because you're letting fear drive the boat and therefore brakes has been put on inside of your life and you can't move you've been stuck in the rut for so long and too afraid to step outside of what my God almighty when you let fear drive the boat you'll stop you'll stop and God won't move you you'll fall dead right there 
Hello? Second thing. I got several of them, so I'm going to move. I'm going to give you the cliff notes of them because that's just how he downloaded them to me. Number two, fear will cause you to digress. I touched on it a little bit. But every one of these, I'm going to give you proof. It's right there in the story. Right there in the black and white. This is not a make-believe story. When you're afraid and fear is in charge, you'll digress. Numbers 14, verses 1 through 4. Listen to this. Listen to what listen to the children of their listen to their mentality. So all the all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried. And the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron. And the whole congregation said to them, Here it is. If only we had died in the land of Egypt. Oh, it gets better. Or even if we'd have died in the wilderness. Wait, it's it's better. Why has the Lord brought us to this land to fall to the sword and our wives and our children should become victims? Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? When fear's driving the boat, you are bail on where God's taking you just to go back to where it's familiar. And you'll be okay with your bondage familiar instead of living in the promise and the freedom of God Almighty. That's what the Scripture says. (laughs) When fear drives the boat, you'll digress. You know why? Fear will hold you in what you know. Because nothing can take you by surprise in what you already know. But when you step out in faith in what God is calling you to do, and be who God is calling you to be, and to trust Him through whatever He need to trust you need to trust Him through, the enemy will poke you and say, You don't know what's going to happen. You don't understand. You don't know the fallout. You don't don't know the dynamics. It's a new place. And so you know what fear does? Fear baits it and says, but you know this. Let's just stay here. But God don't want you to stay there. He's tired of you being there. That's why he came to your Egypt. And that's why he led you out with a strong hand. And that's why he's bringing you to the land of Canaan. Because he don't want you to stay there. He wants you to be where he's got you to be. Hello? But when fear is in charge, you'll stop and you'll digress. You start pulling the same old punches that you that you used to do. Why? Because because you know how you, that's familiar. Listen, Israel was fine going back to Egypt. They liked the garlics and the leeks. So what? They was going to get whooped and beat the flesh off their bones and have to build cities uh, un- un- underneath a horrible taskmasters and, 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 and live in poverty and, and just to be uh, a people that, has been, that is ridiculed in slavery by another uh, people group. They're okay with that. God forbid we have to trust God. When fear is in charge, it causes us to not only put the brakes on, not only to digress. Here's another one. Fear will cause you to harm yourself. Going back to one of the scriptures I've already read, verses 26 and 29 of chapter 14. I won't read it to you again, but all of those, he said, listen to the decree in verse 29. The carcasses of you who, were, who have complained against me will fall in this wilderness. Every one of them that was driven by fear and complained against God died in that wilderness. They, by giving in to fear, they harmed their own selves. 
thinking that they was doing what needed to be done, they would be okay. No. When we walk in fear, we'll destroy ourselves. We'll bring harm to ourselves. But not only that, here's your another one. When fear is in charge, fear will cause you to bring harm to others. In this case, it was mamas and daddies who brought harm to sons and daughters. They were all riddled with fear. Listen, I'll read the scripture to you, verses 31 through 35. But your little ones, whom you said would be victims, God says, I will bring in, and they shall know the land which you have despised. And he said in verse 32, But as for you, your carcasses will fall in the wilderness. Verse 33, And your sons shall be shepherds in the wilderness. God said, I'm going to bring them in, but not before, because of your fear, they'll wonder and become shepherds in the wilderness for 40 years. Now, let me just pause right here and say this. And let me just ask this question. I've asked myself this question many times since yesterday morning. Who am I causing to wander in a wilderness because I'm afraid to not trust God? If these children of Israel would have said, would have taken on the attitude of Caleb and Joshua and said, Look, hey, I, I see the enemy, but boy, I know God is with us. And he said, We can have it. Let's go now. There ain't no need to wait. There ain't no need to stop. We can possess it now. Why? Because God is with us and he's against them and he is for us. Let me tell you something, child of God. If you're a child of God, God is with you. It don't matter the circumstance, nor the situation, nor the dynamics, or the unfamiliar. Listen, all we're called to do is trust God. And that means we might have to trust the people of God because that's how God shows Himself faithful is through the people of God. And if we can't trust the people of God, then we question the faithfulness of God and therefore we aren't trusting the faithfulness of God and we're standing in our fear. It's what these people of Israel did. They didn't trust Moses. They didn't trust Aaron. They didn't trust Caleb. They didn't trust Joshua. They believed their fear. And they complained against the faithfulness of God. And for that, it brought 40 years of misery for a generation that didn't deserve it. God forgive me and God help me that if my fear has, has crept in and I have caused such damage for my son and my daughter and for my wife. God forbid. God forbid. If I stand in fear for a season, I will block the blessings of God and the anointing of God upon my wife and upon my children because I stand in fear. And I could be blocking God doing something in the lives of somebody else because I want to stand in my fear and refuse to have faith in God. Help us, Lord. Fear will cause you to bring harm to others. Here's the last one. Fear will cause you to turn on your spiritual leaders. Fear will cause you to turn on your spiritual leaders. Look with me in the passage. 
chapter 14, verses 1 and 2. And so the congregation lifted up their voices and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron. They complained against Moses and Aaron. Verse 10 of chapter 14. And all the congregation said to stone them with stones. The words of Brother Louis Pettis, settle down. I like how you're shouting me now. When we stand in fear, when we're, when, we, when we're allowing fear to drive and be in charge, we'll turn on the spiritual leaders that God has sent and put in our lives to lead us. And that's what these children of Israel did. They turned on Moses. They turned on Aaron. They turned on Caleb. They turned on Joshua. And they picked up the stones and said, let's kill them. Let's kill them. But let me tell you something. In all of this resisting, in all of this rebellion, that fear brings, it's, it's, it's not that when we allow fear to ch be in charge, it's not that, that we're rebelling against a people. No, you're rebelling against God. When fear is in charge, that is a rebellion against God. That's what the Scripture says right there. Joshua said it out of his own mouth. God said it. He says, they've complained against me. He, he, he took it away from Moses and Aaron and Aaron said, it weren't you they complained against, it was me. Now, these principles can apply to any situation. Any situation that you will ever face that would cause you to trust a promise of God. If you go with fear over faith in His promises, you rebel against God. That's what Joshua said. That's what the children, that's what happened here. But I, I, I want to end on this note. Those are some sobering thoughts. Boy, they, I mean, sobering. I, I, have, I have rehearsed them and prayed over them, but, but I want to end on this thought. As children of God, and I know every one of you in this room, I know you, why? Because we worship together every week. I know most of you on Facebook Live, and there's a lot of you out there I don't know because, well, I've never met you. Because you don't live here, whatever the case may be. But I know you. And I know you love God. I've seen you pouring out your life and your heart to God. I know you love Him. I know you've been touched by the nail-scarred hands of Jesus Christ. I know you've experienced the washing of the blood and the, and the filling of the Holy Ghost inside of your life. I know there's evidence of the child of God experience there. And here's what I want to end with. We, listen, every single day we can get up and say, I shall not fear, for God is with me. Listen, as a child of God, we don't have to live in fear. Because we have three combatants of fear that He has given us. You know, it'd be interesting if you just, I, you, some of you may have already figured this out. Go read the opening of a lot of the Apostle Paul's writings. You'll, you'll see three words that he uses in almost every single opening. Faith, hope, and love. The evidence of faith, hope, and love. And those three things right there are combatants against the enemy, fear. Because see, the thing of it is, is faith in God and His promises will dispel fear. You know why? I forgot to read you this, this, uh, this definition of fear. But 
fear. Well, the definition got erased. It is called being, my, my, my iPad went on the fritz right before church, so I had to add some things back in there. I don't know what happened to it. It just got something in it. But anyways, fear is to be afraid based on the unknown that is birthed out of anxieties, uncertainties, worries, not knowing. People are worried sick about tomorrow because they don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Well, I know what's going to happen tomorrow. One of two things. I'll either go home to be with the Lord or He'll wake me up in the morning and He'll be there with me. That's all I need to know. I wake up, He's going to be there with me. Every step I take, He's going to be there with me. Every situation that I face, He's going to be there with me. That's all I need to know. If God's going to be there with me, He's greater than anything that I'm going to look at or face tomorrow. I'm going to be okay. Why? Because God promised that He's going to take care of me and I'm going to be okay. The Scripture tells me this, that He has given me great and exceedingly wonderful, great and precious promises that pertains to all of life and to all of godliness in His Word. And the Bible says uh, that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God so that when I get in His Word and I take on His promises and He says uh, that I will supply your need according to my riches and glory, you are to hang it up, shut it down, and say, you know what? God's got it. When He says, I'm a very present help in the time of trouble, well, guess what? You might face some trouble tomorrow. It's okay. God's present in the trouble. Your temptation hasn't taken you by, which is uncommon, which is your temptation that is taking you by surprise is not uncommon to man, but yet in fact God is faithful. That with that temptation, as it comes, that, that word temptation means trouble. As it comes, He's made it the way of escape. To come with it. That's why it's not above and beyond that which you're able to bear. Why? Because with the trouble, he sends the answer. That's the promise. That's faith. Faith combats fear. Hope and love both dispels fear. 1 John 4.18 says this. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear involves torment, but he who fears has not been made perfect in love. A person who allows fear to run their life is not standing in the perfect love of God. They don't un they're not standing in the power and the perfect love that God has shed abroad inside of their heart. In fact, when, when fear is in charge... One of the questions that flies out of our mouth, does God love us? You know how I know that? Because I've asked that question before, standing in fear. God, do you really love me? Now go back and check your own life. You've said it. You've questioned it. But when you stand knowing that God loves you, He loves you according to as he said in John 17, and when Jesus prayed, God, I want you to love them like you have loved me. Jesus said, you love my disciples. You love those that I have spilt my blood for, the redeemed. You love them like you have loved me. That's how he loves you. And when you stand in that love, it will combat fear. The promises of God, they produce hope. You know, why the, you know why the Word of God produces hope? Because it's true. It's true. It's forever settled in heavens according to, to the, uh, Psalms 89. It's forever settled. It's not up for debate. It's settled. God's throne and His righteousness rests upon His Word. 
It's perfect. It's true. It's by the God who cannot lie. That's why it gives hope. And when He gives you a promise, the Bible says that the patriarchs of old, they looked for a city whose builder and maker was not man. And they rejoiced. They rejoiced to see the day. They knew that they weren't going to see it, but they rejoiced to see the day when Jesus was born. And when Jesus grew up, and when Jesus walked among men, and when Jesus was crucified, they rejoiced to see all of that, knowing that God was true. They had hope. They had hope. I want to tell you tonight, and I'm going to end with this scripture, 2 Timothy. The Apostle Paul writes this letter to Timothy. Some of the last words that Paul would write to young Timothy. If you go into the book of Corinthians, you can see into a little bit into the, into the life of Timothy. He was a timid person. He was a worry wart. He, he worried a lot. In fact, Paul told the Corinthians, he says, make sure you take care of all of the problems so that when Timothy comes, he's not worried. He's not fretted. He says, I'm mindful of the tears of Timothy. And this is what he wrote Timothy. He says, I thank God whom I serve with a pure conscience, as my forefathers did, and as without ceasing I remember you in my prayers night and day greatly desiring to see you, being mindful of your tears that I may be filled with joy. Verse 5. When I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, I am persuaded is in you also. Therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given you or given us a spirit of fear but of power, of love, and a sound mind. Child of God, we're that us. We're in the us with Paul and Timothy. Fear can't dwell in the temple where the Spirit of God dwells. They don't mesh. When fear drives the boat, we tell God and the Holy Ghost to take a back seat. And that's dangerous. But when we all stir up the gift of God that is within us, and we rest in knowing that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. I want you to hear this preacher tonight. I love you with all of my heart. And I, I know Me personally, this is personally for me because there have been times in the last 16 years of my life that I've had fearful moments that was debilitating. And I've looked back over my life and I've seen, I've seen where I've lashed out at my wife and my kids. Because I was battling with fear about something. I I was so overrun with worry and anxiety that I was just spewing out. But God reminded me that when fear drives and is in charge, this is what will happen. But He does remind me that because I am His, He has put His Spirit inside of me which expels the fear. That doesn't mean I'm not going to... Listen, the knee-jerk reaction when an uncertain circumstance, the first is we fret. Oh, what am I going to do? Take a breath. Say, God, I know this hasn't taken you by surprise. I'm going to rest in you. I'm going to wait on you. And you lead me. You guide me. You direct me. Because if fear drives me, I'm going to wreck it. But if my faith in you and in your promises drive me, 
It's going to be great. I'm going to get to experience the milk and the honey flowing. And I'm going to get to bring all that I can with me to the land that is flowing with the milk and the honey. We're going to get to experience the blessings of God together. Stand with me tonight across this sanctuary. Father, I pray tonight and I ask you to help each and every one of us with our fear. God, every one of us battle in some shape, form, or fashion with fear. It is an emotion. It is, a, it, it is an emotion that I believe that, it, that was birthed through the fall of the sinful fall of humanity. Fear. And God, only you can handle the fear. Only you can handle it. And so, Father, you give us faith, you give us hope, and you bathe us in your love. God, I pray that if there be any in this house or those listening tonight or those who will be listening, Father, I pray, dear God, that they would see and be able to identify where fear is in charge and that they would call upon you. There's mercy. There's grace. There's your faith that you'll give them to believe, and to trust. Help us tonight, Father, to trust you. To have faith in you. And to dispel fear out of our lives. And I pray it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to take these things tonight and I want you to remember them. Apply them. Look at them. And remember when fear goes to rise up in you. You remember the effects of that fear. But you remember the blessings of faith in God and His promises. Listen, I stand here tonight upon God's Word 100% certain that He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He's got you. He's going to care for you and take care of you just like He wants to. Just how He wants to do it. That's all God wanted to do. He wanted to bring the children of Israel into Canaan. And they live under His almighty hand. That's not a bad deal, is it? God bless you is my prayer tonight. Amen. Don't forget our services this coming Sunday morning. You come. Come to worship. Bible study Thursday. Yes. Remember Bible study Thursday. Don't forget that. You come out. You be a part. Remember all of these that are in need of prayer. Be praying for them. Be praying for our nation. Be praying for the church. Amen. We want God's direction, right? Amen. We want God's direction. You pray. Continue to pray. God bless you. You are dismissed.